Hi, my name is Nathan Florsheim, and I am a photo and video instructor at the Evanston Art Center. Thanks to the Philip and Edith Leonian Foundation, we are able to present you with a series of video tutorials to help you with your photography process at home. In this video, we will be going over how to edit your camera raw files with Affinity Photo, which is an alternative editing software to Photoshop that I often recommend to students who are a little bit weary of Photoshop's pricing and subscription structure. Affinity is just a one-time payment of $50, so if you prefer that over a subscription, Affinity is a great choice. A lot of the interface and way that we will be editing using Affinity is quite similar to Photoshop's layout, so if you're planning on switching from one to the other, the learning curve isn't too big. When using Affinity, I still use Adobe Bridge to view and organize my files, so I would recommend watching the Bridge video first so you know how to import and organize your files. Once you've got your files all organized in Bridge, we're going to navigate to the folder where our photos live, and we're going to open it in Affinity by going to Control click on the file that we want, or right click, select Open With, and choose Affinity Photo. Another way to open it directly in Affinity and make sure it doesn't open in another software is to click and hold on the thumbnail, drag and drop on the Affinity icon. Affinity automatically opens raw files in the raw editor and we can start editing right away. The first thing I like to do is navigate from my basic tab to the lens tab. This is where you can enable or disable lens corrections. And what this does is it removes or helps fix any distortion present in the image caused by the camera or the lens you are using. It will automatically detect what camera and lens you are using and apply those corrections to remove any distortion that may be present in the image. Underneath, you can also defringe your image and remove any chromatic aberration that may be present. This is when along the edges of some areas of your image you have color casts like purple, or green, or blue, or yellow. It is not present in every image, but this is how you can make sure it doesn't appear using Camera Raw. And finally, you can remove the actual lens vignette that can occur with some lens distortion. Some people actually like this effect. I prefer to have it removed, and so you can just check that box and it will automatically correct that. You can then go into each of these corrections and adjust them manually. However, typically I find that the automatic adjustment does a pretty good job, so you'd really only need to use these manual adjustments if you're noticing that something isn't getting fixed in the way that you would like. Now, we will navigate back to the basic tab where a majority of the rest of our editing will take place. This particular image is a great example to demonstrate how Camera Raw allows more flexibility in your editing process than something like a JPEG. Specifically, this image has an area in the sky that is quite a bit brighter than I may normally want, and if you have an image like this where there's an area that's very, very bright to the point of being absolutely white, you may not have the flexibility to bring detail back with a JPEG, but with Camera Raw, there is so much extra information in each file, you can actually use the editor to bring detail back from these highlight areas. The first thing that I want to do is enable something called clipping. What clipping does is shows you a visual of where areas are too bright or too dark in your image. Areas that are too bright will have red splotches on them, and areas that are too dark will have blue ones. To turn this on, you want to move your cursor to the upper right-hand corner of the screen, and you'll see two boxes. One of them is a black square with a little blue bracket, and the other one is a white square with a little red bracket. Once you click on those, clipping is enabled, and if you would like to turn clipping off, you can just click them again. We can see that my image has a small area that is too bright, but we're not seeing any areas that are too dark. To address this area, we want to check the box where it says shadows and highlights, and we can use these two sliders until we get the detail back and the red, or if there were blue present, disappears from screen. Once we've used those two sliders to remove any clipping, sometimes your image can appear a little flat or washed out, and that's when you'll use the other sliders such as exposure, black point, brightness, and contrast to get your image looking how you want it to look. I would avoid the clarity slider, which adjusts the sharpness in your image, as if you do need to adjust sharpness, you can do that later on in Affinity, but I rarely, if ever, have to adjust the sharpness in my photographs. 
Next, we can address the white balance in your image. The white balance is something that is determined in camera and it affects whether the image will have a warmer or cooler temperature or a magenta or green tint to it. Ideally, if you have the correct white balance set, your pure whites or what's closest to your pure whites will look white, it won't have a tint to it. But sometimes the auto adjustment on your camera will be off when you're under strange lighting conditions and you'll have a color cast to your image. One of the benefits of editing with camera raw is you can always change your white balance as much as you need after the fact, whereas with a JPEG you are slightly more limited. To adjust your white balance, you wanna enable the white balance tab and you can use the temperature and tint sliders to get the image looking how you want it to look. For example, if your image is too blue, you would move the top slider closer to a yellow area, or if your image were too magenta, you would move it closer to the green area. Affinity also has a white balance tool on the left side of the window at the very bottom. When you click on this tool, you can then move your cursor and click on a particular area of your image and it'll adjust the white balance automatically for that set point. So what you would want to do is find the brightest or whitest area of your image, click on that, and it should do a pretty good job of getting the white balance nice and balanced. From there, if you need to do some tweaks, you can go back to the temperature and tint sliders. Next, we can go back to the Enhance tab under Basic, and we can adjust the saturation or vibrance in our image. Both of these sliders will impact the strength of color present in our image. Saturation will be a general adjustment in the color of your image, while vibrance targets less saturated areas in your image, and you can either have them become stronger or less saturated. The final step in my editing process will be to crop the image. You go to the left hand side of the window and select the crop tool and from there you can adjust the aspect ratio by doing unconstrained original ratio or some of the other presets. I typically will do unconstrained or original ratio. From there you can grab the edges of the image, click and drag to adjust the crop or you can hover outside the edges of the image until your cursor becomes a curved arrow and you can use that to rotate the image to make slight adjustments if your camera is at a slight angle or a skew. Now you can confirm the crop by hitting the return key and you can do any last minute adjustments with the sliders that you need to do. Once you've finished doing all the edits you needed for your image, you can go to the top left hand corner of the window where it says develop and click on that button. This will save all of your changes to the raw file and also open the file in Affinity if you want to continue editing in there. That does it for my video on Affinity's Camera Raw Editor. Similar to Photoshop, there are plenty of other tools inside of this Camera Raw Editor which I encourage you to play with. These are just the ones that I use most frequently and consider to be basic and essential. And once again, we would like to thank the Philip and Edith Leonian Foundation for providing the funding to make these videos possible. Stay tuned for more videos covering Photoshop, other editing softwares, and camera tips and tricks. Thanks.